Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rising HD webcast, Enable Total Workforce Management with SAP SuccessFactors Employee Central and SAP Fieldglass. Thank you for attending today. Uh, today, I am your host, Craig Powers. Uh, I am the managing editor for Rising HCM, uh, which means I cover a lot of the content, the blogs, uh, the webcasts like this. Uh, I'm joined today by our experts, Saif Anjari and Sarah Ullman. Um, Saif, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks a lot, Craig. Hi, I'm Saif Anjari. I'm based in London, UK, and I've been with Rising HCM organization for coming up to four years now. Um, I've been in the HCM space for over 13 years, working from talent management, talent acquisition implementations, and now also working on the DMS space and working in the contingent labor market. Over to you, sir. Hi, Sarah, go ahead and introduce yourself. Apologies. Uh, I'm Sarah Ullman. I'm a practice director with Rising HCM, uh, headquartered in Ohio in the United States. Uh, I've been with Rising for about three years, and prior to that, actually spent over 20 years in the HRIS field, uh, managing various HRIS systems at organizations. So it's very nice to meet everyone today. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Um, just some housekeeping notes. Uh, you can ask questions at any time during the chat. Um, we'll get to uh, them at the end of the webinar, um, but if, if it's something that we can answer quickly, um, we'll go ahead and, and try to do that. Um, we will send you the slides and recordings at the end of the webinar um, you, to your registered email. Um, don't worry about that. I know we get that as a questions a lot. And um, please, you'll get a survey about uh, the webinar at the end. Um, please f uh, fill it back honestly and give us our feedback and, and we'll really appreciate that. So today what our agenda is going to look like, we're going to start out with um, looking at understanding the external workforce in a modern context. Uh, we'll then look, like, look at your options for managing externals. Uh, we'll uh, show you how you, you can assess your needs uh, for uh, technology and process of managing externals. Then we'll look at next steps and then we'll run through the Q&A and we'll provide some additional resources on um, Field Glass and Employee Central for you. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Safe and he can start talking about the external workforce. Hi everyone. So first of all, just want to talk a little bit about external workforce and how important it is in this digital age today. So we start looking at the future, and let's so let's look at the slide a little bit in in detail. And the information which is coming from this slide is recently from SAP Field Glass, which collaborated with Oxford Economics, and they served around 1,050 senior executives around 24 industries and 21 countries. What we feel with the external workforce is vital to any innovation, uh, with 59% executives stating that external workforce helps them compete in the digital world today. Another 62% of executives said their external workforce is important in meeting business needs, specialized in IT, digital, digital skills, such as AI, machine learning, blockchain, and so on. These capabilities are becoming even more important as companies transform and thrive in the digital economy. Other key skills that companies lack now and in which they anticipate future shortfalls include data-driven decision-making, user experience and design thinking. The external workforce is regarded as a critical helping organizations access their skills and capabilities. And when you look at the last um, circle we have there, we have finally 83%. What 83% of executives have stated that they tend to hire more external workers in the next three years. The drive to maintain, <clears throat> the drive to retain market share and break new ground in the digital economy has stoked companies' appetite for talent and new capabilities. Demand for expertise and business transformation and skills in new technology is particularly high. To meet these demands in an agile way, organizations are looking beyond their employee population to get the work done. 
they increasingly turn to the external workforce, which includes non-payroll or contingent workers and service providers. So when we look at the total workforce composition nowadays, there's three large categories. The first being our internal employees, workers who are on the company's payroll, typically receiving all of our traditional employment benefits. These are the employees that are in your success factors instance today. The non-payroll workers, also referred to as the contingent labor. These individuals are engaged by an organization to do work on its behalf, but not as employees. They are contracted via staffing agencies, through uh, freelancer marketplaces, or directly by a company. Examples of these are independent contractors, freelancers, alumni, and temporary labor. And our last group is the service providers, the invisible workforce companies contracted to to get work done. These are typically on a project basis via statement of work. They provide services delivered by people. Examples are consultants, IT outsourcing groups, marketing agencies, law firms, facility management companies, call center operations, and accounting firms. Thanks for that, Sarah. So when we look at the next, can we go back one, so quick? Thanks a lot. So when we look at the um, non-payroll labor, this is one of the largest spend categories in most companies. At present, you'll be shocked to hear that there's 3.3 trillion is spent annually on non-payroll labor, contingent and SOW. When I say SOW, I mean statement of work. This equates to one third of the total workforce. This has been a 41% increase in contingent workforce spending in the past five years. Since 2016, we have seen 67 new jobs created, temporary positions. Also a significant spend on service providers and value they provide. We are seeing they're treated more of a financial transaction rather than a way to get work done. Most organizations today manage their spend on service providers, yet they stop short of managing actual people. For example, ensuring workers delivery ser delivering services comply with health and safety regulations, hold appropriate certifications, and safeguard sensitive data, which is really key to any organization. The external workforce accounts for more than 42% of total workforce spend, and this external labor pool is vast and varied compromise of multiple types of talent under an array of working arrangements. It is also expected that these workers will account for nearly half of the average company workforce by the end of the decade. So on this slide, um, so, so on this slide, we said want to simulate the questions leadership asked today. We want to really focus and think about where you can begin to optimize the following. In most organizations, and we'll always ask you, who is working for us? The question is asked by leadership. Quite often, an organization falls short without, without a centralized system, and it can become very difficult to answer an external talent perspective. Next, what are they doing? The question may look simple on the surface, but there might be a lot of external talent working on key projects and departments providing critical business functions and providing key components within the business. Another great question which gets asked is, what facilities and systems are being accessed? This question lies around security and correct access has been given. Where are they located? Some cases you may have external workers remotely or working on locations on site. To have this information is actually vital. How much you are paying? which is probably the biggest question always asked again. And it's all of these types of questions which combine what should be considered when formulating this external workforce strategy. All the questions go along with the value of proposition of cost, quality, compliance, transparency, and efficiency. Yeah, and Saif, I think many people probably in our audience today are being asked these questions from their leadership today. Um, you know, and the challenge that we face as HR professionals is the data may be stored several places like spreadsheets, uh, email messages, notes from a phone call, you know, any number of places. And therefore, yep. it's very, very difficult to report on, you know, but the leadership in your organization needs to get a view of your total workforce. And that's the challenge. You know, I know as an HR professional, I was asked these questions and, 
you know, to answer it, I had to go ask the administrative assistants in each department if they had any temporary labor, you know, so it's just, it's not possible in many cases to get really accurate data. And the challenges of poor visibility and lack of management rigor really prevent companies from unlocking that maximum value from their service providers and create a lot of risk. So today we really want to focus on how organizations can reap the full benefits and their investments while reducing that risk. So, you know, what is the value proposition to using a total workforce solution? Or, you know, I like to call this what's in it for me. You know, so why are organizations looking at doing this? And, and with this, I want to really focus on the results organizations are getting and what we typically see. You know, so from a compliance standpoint, you know, there's reduced security risks via more controlled on and offboarding process and improved vendor uh, SLA compliance with license and qualification tracking. You know, cost, which you know is always a large factor when we talk about software. You have reduced costs through automation and program efficiencies because everyone is doing work the same way. Centralized payroll and streamlined accounts payable processes. You can better manage your vendor rates uh, the pay rates and the supplier margins more efficiently through the audit trails, which then create savings from sourcing and renegotiation. Efficiencies are created from end-to-end -end process automation with integration. And rich supply chain management cons with consistent contractual engagement and SLAs. And transparency visibility into the entire workforce composition and also visibility to all of your complex contracts insight on the external labor spend pay rates and supplier margins and lastly quality you can pre-qualify candidates to support peaks when you need more contingent labor you'll have market intelligence to find the best quality candidates regardless of their location and ensure proper onboarding and offboarding of the contingent workers. So let's switch and Craig, let's do a poll. So yeah, we'd love if you take a, take a few seconds to ask uh, or answer this question for us. How many of you could provide a report on your total workforce if asked? Uh, um, or if you could take some time, but I could get there or no problem. Um, I'll give you about 30 seconds to answer the poll. Right there, and there we have our results. Uh, it looks like uh, about a third of you say, um, 50% um, of you could do it with some time, and 17% uh, of you say, no problem. Excellent. Yeah. And great for that 17%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that's that's a lot of what we're seeing in the market and, and people that we're talking to. So, you know, thank you everyone very much for our participating in our poll, because it leads us to our next topic where we really want to understand your options for managing external externals so uh, before we start i want to just set the context of why this would apply to you and apply to your organization so as we've discussed there's a growing trend to use the contingent labor in the workplace today most organizations are doing this to help resolve labor shortages for skilled labor and reduce costs. So it's not 1990 anymore, and we're really looking at the external market to hire our people. But with that, we also see some business scenarios presented. So first off, the requisition process. You know, is your requisition process for managing these folks consistent? Do you have full job descriptions for them and rate cards? Do you have centralized processes to manage these folks? You know, lack of consistent supplier management can be presented. 
and inefficient workflows and bottlenecks in your processes that then cause them to take longer than needed. The worker management process. Uh, you know, we, do you have consistent onboarding and offboarding? Are there any timekeeping issues? Proper evaluation of the contingent workers before you bring them on. You know, and is your bulk process just bulky and takes too much time for HR or your procurement folks to manage? You know, I, you, you, could you also be faced with an audit? Yes, the dreaded A word. And do you have the appropriate data when that audit comes up? And invoicing processes. Do you have mismatches, issues with reconciliation? and that type of thing. So you have problems gaining insight into what your total spend is. So now let's talk about what the solutions presented by SAP SuccessFactors and Field Glass can do for you. So by using the contingent workforce management features and Employee Central enables a view to the entire workforce. The contingent employees will be on the standard org chart, but can be flagged as contingent or whatever title you may call those in your organization. If you're using position management, the positions will also show as the position or on the position org chart as vacant or filled. Note that if you that the contingents will also need positions uh, to be tied to. This enables centralized reporting of all of your labor, allowing for then a true headcount in your organization. Contingents are added uh, into EC using the add contingent worker functionality. This is very similar to what you may be doing today with add new employee. Note that these contingents can also be imported or use, using manage pending hires if you choose to use onboarding. The main difference is that there, we just simply collect less information about the contingent worker. Examples of this would be their national ID, their birth date. So we're not really interested in that information about a contingent worker. The contingent workforce management really allows organizations to perform capacity planning and managers can manage their workforce because they're managing contingents just like they do employees today in the same system. In EC, there is the, uh, also the ability to track uh, what vendor a contingent is from and what work order they're assigned to. Additional notifications can also be configured to manage data within these, such as setting up a notification on an expired work order. So really, you know, SAP Success Factors gives you the ability to track your contingents like you do your employees. Cool, thank you very much for that, Sarah. So when we look at the SAP field glass area and the key areas of how do you manage your external talent, you can automate the entire process and procure and manage the flexible labor from requisition all the way through to invoice and payment. To be successful in any organization you need to deploy external workers anywhere at any time and they need to be able to manage them effectively the one key thing with the field glass it allows you to do all of that especially with things like service procurement um, you can simplify the service providers for consulting firms field services and marketing agencies and beyond it really gives you the ability to source and engage and manage the SAP platform and handle any variety of including projects offshore and offsite and many more. One of the key benefits is you can control your spend, mitigate risks and so on. The other fact, the other ish, um, offerings within Field Glass is the Live Insights, which uses the machine learning to simulate external talent scenarios, which is quite neat. Um, within Field Glass Live Insights, you have the benchmark market rates, hiring cycle time, supply performance, all of these sort of seamless and conclude the decisions about external talent within the engagement. Organizations can upload their own employee data into SAP Field Glass Live Insights to gain visibility across talent and across channels in real time. The worker profile management is a quite a neat little feature 
uh, one of the main things we find is how, how do we manage our employees? How do we manage the external workers? The good thing about the uh, profile management is it lets you manage decentralized control and workforce. It allows you to track, manage, and all and all non-traditional workers, which are not tied to any job postings or any statement of work. These profile workers can now be tracked for headcount, reporting, onboarding, and offboarding tasks. So then let's talk about how can we deploy all of these great features from SAP. So the first option is to enable EC contingent workforce module to help you hire and staff your contingent labor. You know, as I talked about, this gives you visibility on the org chart and in your reporting and analytics the basic you know, vendor and work order management, and really enables you to manage that life cycle of the contingent employee. But another great feature is the inter-module and third-party integrations. So obviously contingents could be included or excluded from integrations, but also within success factors, you have the ability to uh, have the contingents move into the other modules, such as learning management, so they can complete any required training. This is particularly important with compliance training and security training, that everyone who works for you goes through the same process to complete all of that required training. Thanks a lot for that, Sarah. So as we look at the option two, um, the SAP Field Glass Procure to Pay allows you to manage your external workers directly in the system with full invoicing and requisition process management as mentioned in the previous slide. Setting up your own pay and charge rates of total spend as well as supply management is simple and can be managed quite effectively, which I feel a pretty neat feature. When you look at analytics, it's critical to business and SAP provides all detailed information on your total spend. The SAP Field Glasses has an open framework, delivers seamless integrations with major technology solution providers and helps customers transform how they engage and manage the external workforce. Moving on to option three, when we look at the total workforce management, it's highly desirable integration with the success factors and SAP fill glass with this deployment option. It allows you to combine data from one system to another via integration and data flowing through seamlessly, giving you the total management and meeting most business needs today. All right, so let's do another poll, Craig. Great, and uh, this poll we're gonna ask you, how many of you are planning to manage your external workforce with the following options? Uh, this is uh, Field Glass and Employee Central, Employee Central only, Field Glass only, another solution entirely, or you're just not sure yet. And again, I'll give you about 30 seconds to answer. Great, and it uh, looks like we have a, um, almost half of you are just not sure yet, so I guess that's why you're attending this webinar. <laughs> um, and so uh, uh, some of the, the other ones, I see some of you are already doing Field Glass and Employee Central, that's great. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, perfect. A nice mix there. And, and those that set another solution, let's see if uh, SAP Success Factors and Field Glass may, uh, may be a better fit. So next, let's move on to assessing your needs. So, you know, has any uh, of our good project management friends will tell us, you know, making a plan up front will always result in better delivery of your project. And, you know, we always suggest you begin with setting their strategic vision for your organization and what measures will be needed. You know, if, if there's not a strategic vision around managing contingent workers, um, what does that look like then? Uh, and with that, determine the measurements. So what measures will be needed? Not just the 
afterwards, what analytics and reports do I run, but how will you measure the success of this project overall? Uh, this will enable your success criteria. So next, what is the scope of your project? Start with the current state, you know, to determine how you're managing those contingents today and what you really think needs to change with that. You know, that goes back to our previous slide on the deployment options. Uh, the scope will then define your timeline and your budget for your project. Are there any roadblocks and risks? You know, this always comes up in a project, but it's really important to uh, discuss what other business needs may be happening during this project that would impact it. You know, these could be things like, oh, we launch performance reviews, so part of the team will be working on that. Or we have a really heavy hiring season during that time, so it may not be the best time to discuss working on this project. Next, assess your inventory. Context, it means many things. So, you know, if you're using position management today, we talked about that positions will need to be created. You know, do you have the data to do that? If you choose to track your vendors and your work orders, data will also need to be loaded for those tables. So do you have a clear and concise list somewhere with that data on it? Do you have complete records of all of your contingents so they can be loaded into EC? Because sometimes that data may not be readily available and you may have to survey a group of people to get it. Yeah, and Sarah, just to add to that point, and I think when you're making this plan, um, I think the other thing is having the right people engaged in the project. Um, I always find that key to any implementation or any program you're going to bring into the into any organization. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with that. It, and you know, when we we talk about uh, field glass or or EC, you know, it it goes to you know including all of your uh, subject matter experts that may be running the, uh, the contingent workforce process today, you know, owners of other modules with success factors, especially if you want to uh, use some of that great in-suite integration, you know, the business owners that can help drive decisions and then testers, right? You've got to have a great group of people that can test this, that understand the process and the future state and where you want to go. So, always great and you know i can't forget you know a project manager too right they're always needed too yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know um and lastly design your transformation journey you know so what does your timeline look like uh set your project up in a way so you can make quick decisions and move on you know and i'd say stakeholder involvement is key you know, so the stakeholders should be helping you set that vision, your business and your stakeholders, but then circle back with them on that transformation journey to make sure we're, we're adding value and doing the right things. So now let's talk specifically more about success factors, right? So the idea with this life cycle is really to showcase that managing contingents is not just with Employee Central. If you want a full contingent process, then you can leverage EC, you know, doing your hiring, viewing the contingent details, maintaining the, the employee or the contingent, uh, the work orders, terminating, all of that type of thing. But you can also include onboarding. So do you want them to come through an onboarding process like you have your employees? The learning management system for training, uh, and lastly, offboarding. So within Employee Central, you know, uh, what we recommend is obviously using the contingent workforce management functionalities. So the, the, the tracking of the data about that person and the job they're going to be doing for you. We also recommend the use of position management and creating a vacancy in your position org chart in the success factors platform that then you can fill with either contingent labor or non-contingent labor. Uh, track the contingent labor and the work orders in the contingent worker profile in EC. And again, that's tied to the contingent worker. Hire, rehire, terminate, 
uh, doing all those things in EC using workflows, right? So as you do that, those transactions today on employees, you have workflows. The workflows for the contingents can be different if that's what's required for your business. And display the contingent workers in the platform uh, using the org chart. Now that is an option. Uh, so there is a way to turn off your contingent workers so they do not show on the org chart if that is your desire. There's also some optional integrations uh, with the contingent workforce management module. So we talked about how in the LMS that you can assign training curricula specific to your contingents uh, and then they can complete that training in the LMS. So it's one-stop shopping uh, for all your training needs and it's again same UI that everyone is used to using so it really uh, simplifies things and we really recommend this for uh, any compliance training or certifications that you're requiring out of these folks so that it's properly tracked. Uh, you can also use the onboarding and offboarding uh, with the worker in the onboarding module so again that's uh, optional but if you want them to follow that same process your employees do. And lastly, these folks can even participate in performance reviews and goal setting. So it depends on how you view that workforce and what you need them to do for you, but that is also an option. So now let, let's talk about uh, scope and impact considerations, right? So when we talk about adding contingent workers to that stack, what does that look like? So first, integrations. So you now have to think about the impact of bringing contingents into success factors on your already scoped or implemented efforts on data migrations. So first off, technical interfaces. So uh, design or update your interfaces to take into account the contingents. Do you include them or do you exclude them from your interfaces? Data migration. So you need to assess the time it's going to take to load contingents and gather that data into your system. And module integration. So again, we talked about how you can integrate uh, the contingents into other modules. What are your business requirements around that? So it can be properly scoped. Next is business consulting. So business process re-engineering. Right, so when you're adding contingents, is there a need to redesign some of your business process flows and workflows with that? Change management, you know, does this broaden your scope of your implementation? So you've got to add more change management or training options. And deployment and strategy alignments. Contingents in EC may require alignment with other ongoing projects to ensure coordination. Right, of data flows, processes, things like that. Your system. So this is additional configuration, which as many of us know that have used success factors will often require changes to your role-based permissioning. Uh, are there data module changes? Obviously, we'll have position changes if you're using position management and how you wanna control the contingent labor positions. Workflows, business rules, all of that would need to be reviewed to ensure we're properly uh, administering the contingent labor. And then decommissioning. So how are you tracking the contingents today and how do we properly decommission that system? Uh, some clients we've worked with uh, have contingents in EC today just using a separate employee status. So how do we decommission that to move them into contingent workforce management? And lastly, testing and impact analysis. So obviously additional testing will be needed uh, as contingents will impact your, the, uh, the scenarios that you have planned. So how do you plan for that? And cross modules impacts, right? So if we're using uh, some of that great cross module integration, we need to ensure that we test all of the cross-module integrations. Thanks a lot, Sarah. So as we now look at the integrated total work workforce management. So one thing, the integration with success factors is bringing external work information into the core HR system. It combines it with the internal worker data and position information. 
which is where we were sort of lacking that information within EC or employee central in success factors. The NEAT feature allows an organization to match HR position profiles with requisition requests and eventually create a contingent worker profile, similar to employee profile for an internal worker. And as Sarah mentioned, EC for contingent workers is only limited amount of information is maintained. The question which I ask sometimes is, what will this integration bring for an organization? Well, it'll bring a streamlined process, having full data of your external workforce and managing all of that workforce and controlling spend. When hiring a contingent worker and the data from a vacant position in success factors, it automatically routes to SAP field glass where the appropriate requisition is created. What I love about the SAP field glass is it automates the entire process of procuring and managing temporary contract labor from requisition all the way to invoice and payment. The key information about the external worker staffed on a requisition is fed from SAP field glass back to SAP success factors employee central and a contingent worker profile is created in real time. And yes, that is real time. So you are able to optimize a total workforce at any given moment. The worker integration uses SAP Cloud Platform integration as middleware, known as HCI, so some of you may be aware of that, to replicate the worker data from Field Glass to Employee Central. The replication could be scheduled to HCI to pick up the worker data regularly, so it keeps your data um, in, in real time and correct. The end-to-end -end process of total, total workforce management allows you to source, engage, manage, and pay the external worker throughout the life cycle. In addition to SAP Field Glass offers functionality that allows you to access the application via the mobile device, which is quite neat. And it actually, it instantly allows you to approve, reject items enabling the workflow to pro progress without delay. So as we look more in depth of understanding what the features are within Field Glass, Field Glass is probably one of the only vendor management systems which is 100% focused on technology. The contingent module offers powerful functionality to search, identify, track, and manage external, external workers. It's typically integrated with success factors with contingent worker and is actively activated. As you can see from the slides, the typical functionality in contingent worker, you have the requisition, candidate selection, and so on. As we go into module two, so module two is another part of the um, fill glass feature. Um, it's statement of works or SAW in short. Engage allows you to include in projects, offshore, on, on, off-site, independent contractors, manage programs and business services. No matter the engagement type, fill glass VMS simplifies the service and procurement process. From the slide, a few of the features listed are multi-bids SAW. This provides the service bid requirements to chosen suppliers, detailed complete format, on and offboarding workflows. This is incorporated into the SAW to ensure suppliers have completed the appropriate steps prior to beginning the working project. A variety of payment terms, flexible invoicing capabilities and supplier agreements, the ability to track headcount and equipment, providing visibility into our entire labor workforce and controlling the budget of the project at the individual level. Module 3 is another neat feature which I discussed earlier and it's all about the worker profile tracking. It gives you the visibility across the whole total workforce, accurately reports on non-employee worker data and better manage on and off onboarding. Avoid risks associated with retrieving assets and disabling system access and that's one of the key things is when someone has been offboarding, has the access been taken away or is it still valid? All of this workforce pro worker profile tracking allows you to check all of that. It enforces compliance and policies such as tenure and rehire eligibility. And then we look at the last bit, the outcome of what, what can what Field Glass offers. It offers sophisticated reporting capabilities to help extract data, determine cost saving opportunities, improvements, compliance related corrections. There's a few features within the analytics. Um, there's the analyzer, which is the next generation drill down analysis tool, which makes it instantly available to users at every level. Analyzer is easy to use features such as conditional formatting, drag and drop, it's just to name a few. Standard reports, again, these reports allow the user to narrow down using filters. For example, if you want to do employees or 
talent management within the country or current currency, you can have that specific data. You also have the option to manipulate multiple ways, say business units, cost centers, and so on. Now let's talk about your next steps as it relates to the contingent worker. So delivering the transformation. And you know, as I was listening to uh, our, our presentation today, I thought, you know, wow, sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. So, you know, if you would like to uh, see a demo of Field Glass or the contingent workforce management modules, uh, we'd be happy to do that if you want to reach out to us. I know there's some emails at the end of the session uh, to really kind of show you uh, exactly what it looks like in the system. But, you know, when we talk about delivering the transformation, uh, let's start with, uh, you know, how we recommend you deliver. So step one is turning on the contingent workforce management and employee central. This gives you some great short-term gains, you know, the ability to audit in real time the contingent workers you have uh, in your company today. It allows you to reclassify workers, giving you that global visibility and really assess the needs of your stakeholders. So what do they really need out of this um, and how you get there? You know, we'll start with contingent management uh, module design, right? So we go through some workbooks and design what you need, what fields you need, you don't need, like a typical employee central implementation. Then we'll do a business process review where we really look at what does the business process need to be around managing your contingents. Obviously, we have to include our project management friends for that design and planning. Uh, we need you to do an assessment of what suppliers you have, uh, some solution architecture potentially, again, especially if we're growing cross-module with this, and lastly, any training so that you know how to administer your contingent workers and any of the tables around that that would be needed. So let's, I'll turn it over to Saif, who can talk about the medium term. Thanks a lot, Sarah. So as we look at the medium team term, we sort of look at more at the field glass and what is actually being done. The main key things what we find is your master data alignment, is make sure your master data is in sync. Have you got the right information feeding through from success factors? Next is, how are you gonna set this up? What's your structure within the organization? How are, you, how are you gonna make this program work for you? For example, your approval chain, is there specific requirements for finance to look at before any posting of positions or any approvals going through to any suppliers? Solution architecture, have you got the right people engaged internally? Are they understanding the program? Do they understand the logistics from success factors going into field glass? PMO, uh, program office, staffing, who is gonna be managing the program? Do you have a PMO in place? Are they fully aware of the process? So all of these key things are sort of important. And again, like um, Sarah mentioned, things is what kind of field you're gonna have a setup within your field glass setup. What kind of things are gonna be on a requisition? What kind of things are gonna be on a posting? Secondly, you would have anything, what's the supply and PMO enablement? Have you engaged or developed agreements with your suppliers, providers for continued workers? Has rate cards been agreed or has any charge rates been confirmed? All of these key things are needed at this stage. Looking at digital adoption, it's, it's about changing the mindset of using, as we discussed before, using emails, paper trails, and spreadsheets. It's about actually using the system and going forward with the system. Reporting fundamentals. What's, what, what kind of reports do you require? Are these reports going to be coming out of um, success factors, or do you require the reports coming out of field glass? And all of these key questions within this next medium term. Once we've gone through the medium term process, we have to keep in mind of integrating another system how things are being configured in SAP success factor. Is, con is contingent workers enabled? Is position management enabled, as Sarah had mentioned? As we look at the final phase of the integration, we need to think strategically. Integration with SAP success factor, has that been fully established? Are we receiving data information correctly? Is the data going back to success factors from field glass? Is that correct? Is there any manual adjustments to be made to onboarding or offboarding? Maturing of PMO, defining the policies. Has strict process been put in place to make sure the PMO officer can be compliant and process seamless from one system to another? The supplier program, has that now fully developed? Has the supplier again been following the process, keeping with requirements? And are they, is it working well for them? 
business process review. Is there any documentation, re-engineering, is as within the integration, is there current documents in place, the system use, terms and privacy policies? So we all know that implementing a new system is challenging, but really the true measure of success of any project is not the go live, that's just a milestone. The true measure of success is how the business can be transformed. So to be successful, you need to consider these items. The first of which is service delivery and implementation. Again, ensure your business processes are in line and don't forget proper staffing of your project and of course our friends in project management. You know, with reporting and strategic analytics, it's important to begin with the end in mind and determine what analytics will need to be used. Strategic and change management. What is the long-term vision for not only the project, but after as well? Because it's always needed. Determine the design and change of your organization, which will then also lead to your training that is needed. And we always recommend the use of a digital adoption solution that provides in-context help as your users transact and navigate in the system. So next, we'd like to open it up for any questions that uh, our audience may have today on the content that we went over. Great, yeah, so I, I have uh, uh, one question to start off and then feel free to um, uh, submit your questions uh, in, the go in the webinar. Um, so uh, one question I have uh, is, uh, we are currently managing our data transaction and transactions via email, spreadsheets, and manually entering into our different systems. Uh, what would you suggest be the first step for a customer in the early stages of looking at implementing this program? Um, I can answer that one first, if that's okay. All right, Sarah. Okay, so, I mean, as implementing with customers over the years, I've heard this a few times. Um, you know, people are still using papers, emails, spreadsheets to move data across as a manual process to different systems. One thing I always advise is, is how do you manage your data in one system specifically? Uh, it is vital for this digital transformation, especially with SAP success factors and field glass integration. As of your data is being seamless, routine products, this keeps everything current and always in sync, leaving you managing important things, basically the business. So have this data up to date also allows you to really target those external workforce and specific needs in the business. Yeah, and I think um, it, it's not uncommon that we hear this for sure. I think Excel is every HR professional's best friend. Uh, and that's a lot of times where we're tracking so much of this data. So, you know, I think it really becomes key to what data elements do you need to track on your contingents and, and things like that and have those conversations so the system can be appropriately built out. And, um, you know, prepare your users because they may not want to give up their spreadsheets and emails and that type of thing. So always yeah. keep that in <laughs> mind as well, right? Uh, yeah, we ran exactly. into that for sure. Great, thank you. And uh, I have another question, and this is probably a little bit forward-thinking one, but um, they said, we have success factors in Ariba, and how does Fieldglass integrate with Ariba for procurement activities? So, um, so um, I know that uh, from from my perspective, uh, Fieldglass and Ariba, um, uh, they're, they're both part of the intelligent span management solution now. Um, so uh, I think we can expect um, the connections between um, Fieldglass and Ariba uh, to grow uh, as it's going forward. Um, I, I think those, those are things that SAP is working on. Um, do you have anything else to add, uh, Sarah or Safe? So no, that was fine. That was absolutely fine. Actually. Um, I, I have some. Uh, um, uh, so basically, it's productized on the roadmap, and we can, uh, or basically, you can integrate to um, peer to peer and the and the the Ariba supplier network, the extensive network. And uh, currently, um, as success factors and SAP, I mean, Fieldglass and SAP are working on contracts 
and, and and other integrations in there as well. So we can expect more as we're going forward uh, um, with the integrations. I, I know it's something that SAP is really focused on. Great. Um, again, um, I'm getting a question. Uh, will this be um, available? Uh, uh, this record be made available after the webinar. It will be made available. Um, we will email it to you after the webinar. Um, uh, one more question I, I have as well um, for Safe and Sarah. Uh, we currently use staffing agencies who provide skilled contractors. Currently, HR has had to go through many applications, but we do not always get the right skilled candidates, and it takes too long of a process to review each one. Um, how can this product help us save time in reviewing in the reviewing process? So I can take that one first. So that's a great question. And one of the things that's very important is clarity and communication, what you, what you want. So with supplier management functionality within SAP Food Cloud, you set the rules as the customer. So you set the skill set required, the other requirements, pay rate, etc. The other great feature which I love and it, within SAP Food Glass is limiting the number of candidates a supplier can put through. This really works well as it really makes the supplier think carefully before submitting an external worker and for any specific job posting. So what we found going in the past is that you know suppliers were just sending all number of candidates through. Some of them didn't even have the skill skill set. But with the field glass, you sort of limit that sort of um, possibility for suppliers. So you give them an option of this is the number of candidates you can put through, and they have to be meet this criteria. So, which is a nice little feature within SAP Field Gloss. Great, and um, I think we have time for uh, uh, one or two more. Um, uh, so, in Employee Central, can a contingent worker be converted to an employee, or vice versa? Yeah. So, uh, yes, the process for that would be you'd actually have to uh, terminate the contingents, uh, it, it, the, the person, whether they're contingent or employee, terminate their employment. And then using the rehire functionality uh, that exists in the system where it matches based on uh, various attributes, uh, say yes and select the match. So then it would show that they were a contingent person and then hired as an employee or vice versa. Great. Um, maybe one more. Uh, uh, do do I need a PMO if I use just the short-term solution? No, you don't need a PMO. But I mean, what we do say is, if you have a person who's going to be managing that, they do know the sort of compliance regulations and so on, dealing with external workers, uh, and they do understand the process. So that's the main thing. So. It's not required, but I mean, it is a main thing within field class that you do use a PMO uh, or someone acting as a PMO within, within the organization. Great, you're quick on the answers. I'll, I'll do one more. Um, uh, so if, if, if you're currently live with field, field glass and success factors, what do you need to take into account when preparing for the integration? So is that an integration with success factors you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, field glass and success factors. Yeah, so I think with, if you're if you're currently implementing success factors, I, I mean it's pretty straightforward with the integration. There's a few settings which need to be configured. Um, the, I mean I think um, Sarah could answer the EC part, but I mean I think the main things are you have continued workforce uh, work worker setup, position management um, enabled, and I think what Rising can do is create that connection between the two systems. We work quite well in doing that, integrating both systems. Um, and it's pretty much straightforward. It's not too difficult. I mean, if you already have your field glass in place, there may be certain things we might need to look at in regards to your master data and data where it's feeding from, um, and just look at how we can get that fixed and corrected within using the success factor model as well within that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think from an EC perspective, um, you know, there there are always certain data elements, right? So there's uh, EC fields in um, identity org and work order information that are required for the field glass integration. So we'd always uh, make sure that that's properly built out. Uh, there is master data synchronization uh, between uh, field glass and EC for legal entity, entity excuse me, a business unit location and cost center. Uh, you know, so it's important that we, 
we look at that consistency and data alignment of that data uh, between those systems, especially if we're in a situation where you're, you've got both modules live or maybe one and not the other, that when we build out, we build out with a purpose that this integration uh, will be used. Great, thank you. Um, so if we didn't get to any of your questions, uh, we'll, we'll uh, follow up uh, after the fact. Super, so, and we'd like, go ahead. Oh, we'd like to thank everyone for attending today. And uh, please contact us uh, for feasibility workshops or assistance in building your business case, or if you'd like to see a demo and more about these, uh, these products, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, that's our website there uh, that you can then do a contact us off of. And for additional resources, um, we, we, we have a number of blogs on the website um, around uh, the integration of uh, field glass and EC and, and, and just uh, total workforce management, balancing your internal external resources. And we'll continue to have more content. It's it's a focus for us. I can tell you as the managing editor, um, every every month we'll have more and more content um, around field glass and, and also its integration with success factors. Um, so, uh, and next month we're also going to have, and we have this every quarter as the success factors releases come, we'll have um, our virtual expert hours. So um, stay tuned for those. They should be coming in the middle of the month in June. It's a great opportunity to, to ask our experts direct questions live. Um, uh, they've been uh, very successful and very uh, fun in the past. So um, uh, stick around for those. And uh, that's that's all we have. But uh, uh, right there, you see our the contact for our ex experts, uh, Safe and Sarah. Um, go ahead and reach out to them if you have any additional questions. And again, um, thank you very much for attending. And uh, um, we look forward to speaking with you about this in the future.